what's going on gang back at y'all with another one let's get it welcome back to another episode of street chronicles where we dive deep into the untold stories of the streets today we're shedding light on one of la's most notorious street gangs the bounty hunter bloods sit tight because we're about to uncover some real gritty street history and the infamous rivalries that shaped their legacy What's that? It's a fucking. What is on? What is on? What is on? Hey, no, no. What you doing? What you looking for? What you over here? What you looking for? What you looking for? What you looking for? What you looking Hey, 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 Hit that subscribe button and smash that notification bell on game. So you never miss an episode. We're bringing you that raw truth, no filter. Let's get it. In the late 60s, Watts was a pouty keg of poverty and violence. In the midst of the chaos, the bounty hunter bloods emerged as a response to the rise of the crypt. These niggas was determined to protect their community and stand tall in the face of adversity. The gang was originally established in 1969, but became well established by 1972. The founders of the Bounty Hunters, I can actually say Percy Jackson gave the name. I can actually say Gary Barker took the name and hit it in graffiti. And being that he hit it in graffiti, a lot of people were thinking that he gave the name. And Junior Thomas took the graffiti in the name and he put a lot of work in behind it. But formed here before there was Bounty Hunters, and when do you think that started? That probably started like 70, 69, and I would say, uh, and when they was in high school together, you had uh, the Jordan Green Jackets that, 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 Clan green jackets, and you had the Nickerson Garden green jackets where people claim green jacket, and you had skating together. It was more like a club than anything, because I don't never remember them going around terrorizing the neighborhood, but they probably socked up a couple of people. Hey, Ray uh, was in YTS when all this was going on. Okay. So he didn't really get to witness this transformation from the green jackets to the bounty hunters. And and that's originally correct. That is correct. He didn't see none of that. He matter of fact, he had he 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 was having a little beef inside Y behind our uh, our madness out here. What was his feeling while he was in uh, YTS? Well, he was confronted by some Crips. From my understanding, it was either Pet Bull or Bulldog. If one of the dogs came up on him and they confronted him about the bounty hunter thing, and legend have it that Ray told them. He's not a bounty hunter, but those his homeboys. And they tried to rush him, and from my understanding, two rushed him and one got knocked out. And that was that. While today, it is a set of bloods, it was originally known as the Green Jackets. Gary Barker and Bobby Jack are believed to be the set's founders. The name Bounty Hunter Bloods comes from the streets they claim. Around 11.5 or 115th Street, and the Jordan Downs housing projects. They marked their turf with their signature red, and soon they became a force to be reckoned with. In 1987, I was hit three times with an AK across the head, the arm, and the leg. If them three reasons ain't good enough to stop game banging, I don't know what is. Now here's just a little bit of information on the game. So their founding location is Watts, Los Angeles, California. Their years active is from 1969 to present. Their territory is the Nickerson Gardens. Their ethnicity is mainly African-American. Their membership 
is well over 2,000 plus. Now, some of the activities that they're known for being involved in includes, but it's not limited to, drug trafficking, robbery, extortion, murder, burglary, identification theft, car theft, kidnapping. Now, their rivals are the Great Street Watts Crips, the West Side Pyrus, and the 11A East Coast Crips. Ass, nigga. nigga hit me in my nigga got that he he hit me in my mouth kicked me in my head on yeah nigga got that nigga hit me and ran on geo but with power comes rivalry and the bounty hunter bloods found themselves in the crosshairs of the infamous great street crips the heat was on and the streets of watts were on edge the gang is perhaps most known for its long-standing rivalry with the great street crips which has been described by gang experts as the most violent and long-lasting feud between two gangs that are in the Watts area. The 90s were no joke. The city was on fire during the LA riots. They handcuffed him while they were running him. The female had an FI card where she was getting all of his personal information. Then they run him to see if he has a warrant. And just in case he does, and they don't have to worry about chasing him or handcuffing him. He's already cuffed, but they're not allowed to do that anymore. You can't just see a black person, see the way they're dressed, and say, oh, he must be slinging or something. Let's cuff him up. That's the way they've been doing We know they do it that way, but they're not allowed to. What are you doing here? A young woman, a looter, tried to explain what has been going on in this dreadfully troubled city. It's a way for people to vent their frustration, and then they're, like, targeting, uh, like, uh, Korean-owned businesses and white businesses. And yet, what we have seen seemed more a colorblind orgy of wrecking and taking what has happened to people. So help me God, I never seen parents teaching children to steal. If I had done that, my mom would beat the stuffings out of me if she had called me stealing. But these parents teaching their kids to steal, I can't understand it. Do they ever take their kids to church? Do they ever teach them to believe in Jesus? I don't believe this stuff. I just can't. In black ghettos, some businesses tried this. Often, it didn't work. Gone. But amidst the chaos, the bounty hunter bloods and the great street cribs forge an unlikely truce, uniting for the sake of their community. In 1992, the watch truce was declared, which saw a rapid decline in violence between the two street gangs. We'd like to thank the media for coming out uh, for this positive event today. Uh, first of all, we'd like to open up uh, in honor of our co-worker, Anna Lizarraga, uh, who was tragically murdered last night. And, and I want to say to the media, we will not be uh, fielding any questions regarding that, that our executive offices will be handling questions regarding the media. My name is Ed Turley. I'm the target area manager for Community Youth Gang Services. Uh, yeah, my name is Anthony. How's, every, how's everyone, everybody out there in the world? Uh, yeah, we just, you know, we're really on a positive tip now, you know what I'm saying? We've been, we've been doing wrong for so long, it's time to do right, you know? And uh, we just want everybody out there to know, you know what I'm saying, just come down, give us y'all support, you know. All, you know, all the brothers and sisters out there, you know, just come down, you know, like Sunday. Come to the park, you know what I'm saying, on, 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 on 51st and Avalon, and you know what I'm saying, check us out for yourself. You can see everything you want to see, you know what I'm saying. And um, if this, you know, if you know, if, if this going to really go somewhere, we need support from you. Not just, you know what I'm saying, a black way, we need support from all races, you know what I'm saying. You know, we want, we want to, we want to do something. You know, and then just give us a chance. That's all. That's we just want a chance. That's all. Amen. Oh, hello, world. Everybody, the homies out there. You know, even the homies we got incarcerated. That's looking from this side out here. This is what's happening out here, man. We not joking. We not jiving. Y'all know that coming straight from the heart. Look who's standing here. Look what's been going on out here. You know, I was like the opening saying, we as the Bloods and the Crips have joined together without any problems from the police, the media, and the Bloods as Crip as one. We'll be able to give back to the parks, recreation, and the rest of the community can live without, so the community can live without fear. We would like to go to speak to schools, parks, to the whole community, businesses, 
and everybody to let them know, let our younger generation know that we're coming together to lead those who would have been going astray and we're going to lead them now to the right direction. And he know that. As well, we want the homies inside there to know, the system to know, we ain't forgot y'all. Y'all yeah. going right. to see packages coming. We can right. promise y'all that now. Only we can promise y'all y'all got packages coming. Just be patient with us and get y'allself strong up in there. That's, right. That's, right. That's all we ask of y'all in there. Out here, we as a community, going to work with the community to get it right. You know where it's coming from. Y'all hearts and our hearts, we know what's popping. However, by 2005, the truce had reportedly imploded with the homicide rate increasing to at least seven. But you know how it goes, peace is short-lived. As the dust settled, old rivalries reunited and the Watts neighborhood became a battleground. In 1993, Regis Dion Thomas, a member of the bounty hunter Watts Bloods, shot and killed two Compton Police Department officers during a traffic stop. They were the first Compton police officers to be killed in the line of duty in the department's 65 year history. In 1997, members of the 118 East Coast Crips shot a school bus in the hopes of killing members of the Bounty Hunter Bloods, killing 17 year old bystander Corey Williams instead. The Bounty Hunter Bloods were no strangers to the game. Drug trafficking, violence they had a reputation to uphold but this life comes with consequences and law enforcement wasn't letting up in 2003 shots were fired at lapd patrol officers in two incidents in the nickerson gardens projects in 2000 the fbi convicted 30 bounty hunter watts blood members on federal drug violations for the distribution and conspiracy to distribute crack cocaine. An injunction was imposed on the gang in 2004, which limited the movement of members. the feds came down hard indicting multiple bounty hunter bloods and great street crips members for their involvement in drugs and violent crimes it was a heavy blow to both gangs hey gang 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 it's a whole lot of gangs in here huh 15th street demons you hear me fuck lotions fuck strap fuck starvers fuck ap's fuck we sales fuck anything if it ain't bunny on us But despite the crackdown, the bounty hunter bloods persisted. Their brotherhood ran deep, and they found strength in each other, determined to hold their ground. Gang injunctions came into play. The city's attempt to control the streets. But you can't contain the spirit of Watts. The struggle continued, and the bounty hunter bloods adapted, finding ways to survive. They say dangerous, that's the worst for That's us. our lingo. Like, bless the bottle that came from right here. We didn't even know what type of struggle we was in, though, because we always had each other having fun, though. They had a cup of noodles in there with no water, <laughs> blood, you feel me? No cap around here. Oh, really, yeah. Pretty dangerous, bro. <laughs> Nobody can stop this war but us. Who got that on their walls and their projects or where they at? We yeah, on that Bill Haven yeah, Street, 112% uh, deuce line. Bonnie on the life matter. Huh? Get the hat on there. That part. In 2013, OFTB rapper and Bounty Hunter Bloods affiliate Kevin Flipside White was shot dead by alleged members 
of the Great Street Watts Crips. Over the years, their rivalry with the Great Street Watts Crips remained fiery, leaving a trail of violence and tension. The battle for respect and territory filled the flame. But not everything is black and white. Despite their rough reputation, some Bounty Hunter Blood members sought to change the narrative. Community initiatives, mentoring, trying to break the cycle. But let's keep it real, the struggle is ongoing. The pull of the streets is relentless and breaking free from the cycle of violence is not so easy. He got shot right here in this corner. Lorna Hawkins' 21-year-old son, Joe, was an innocent bystander. About one of every four gang shootings claims someone like him. It's a lot of nonsense just to do what the hell they want to do, which is kill and, and, and terrorize the streets. The ones that killed my son, I could rip their heart out right now. If there's any hope of saving the next generation from the ritual of retaliation, former football star Jim Brown may have an answer. Damn, I'm glad you made it. Bone and other legendary Bloods and Crips now meet regularly at Brown's home. We have some of the most volatile individuals in this city in this room right now. The sessions are like group therapy. Brown's Amer I Can program seeks to focus their energy in a more positive direction. So we are a political force, a social force, an economic force to do right. The message might break through to men like Bone, who are now fathers. He doesn't want the next generation growing up as he did, constantly worrying about the next bullet. I got faith in my heart, and I believe it's going to stop. It might not be in our lifetime. It might not be in none of our lifetimes. You know, as long as it stops. So, as we wrap up this episode, let's reflect on the legacy of the Bounty Hunter Blood. A story of resilience, brotherhood, and the complexities of street life. Remember, gang, knowledge is power and understanding is the first step towards change. Drop your thoughts in the comments below and let's keep the conversation going. If you like the Street Chronicle series, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to join our community. We're out here keeping it real and we not stopping. Until next time, stay safe out there and remember, it's about love, not hate. Peace.